We hope you enjoy this Christmas Eve sermon. Merry Christmas and blessings to all. From the Old Testament, the book of Isaiah, chapter 9. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. Upon those living in the land of the shadow of death, a light has dawned. Who were those people that were walking in darkness? I guess I would hope they were troublemakers, ne'er-do-wells. But the fact of the matter is, the people that were walking in darkness, they were God's people. The Israelites in Isaiah's day had begun to trust the wrong things. They had become accustomed to placing their trust in idols, in prosperity, in armies, in security, in themselves. This was a darkness, but they didn't recognize it as one. They thought they had it all. They thought they knew it all. But as their country began to fall apart, their standing in the world was reduced. And when foreign invaders began to take over their lands, they realized they were in trouble. They had made a mess, but thank God, God still offers hope. Light always shines the brightest during the darkest of times. Fast forward a few thousand years. I grew up in the 50s, the 60s, and the 70s. My wife would tell you she's still raising me. My parents hardly talked of growing up during the Depression. They wanted to shelter myself and my sisters from difficulty. In the 70s, during the oil crisis, my dad was out of work for a year. My parents worked really hard to make sure that everything sort of stayed normal. They didn't want us to, to know hardship or difficulty as they had growing up. It was a pretty sheltered existence. A time of national prosperity with little or no worry. During my lifetime, our country launched its first satellite, landed men on the moon, and won the Cold War. And I thought it would go on forever. The young people of today, including my children, have grown up in such good times, they too have been sheltered for most hardship and difficulty. We have grown accustomed to trusting our own little darknesses, homes and jobs and money and sports teams and retirement accounts. Our society has had it all wrong, and even good people can get drawn in. Trusting money, trusting things, thinking it would go on forever, we walked a bit in darkness. Our society gained the world at the expense of its soul. Now it is 2008. Suddenly we have a financial crisis. People are losing their jobs. Bank of America, 35,000 jobs. AT&T, 12,000. Bennigan's, 9,000. Bristol Myers, 8,000. General Motors, 34,000, and the list goes on and on. Now, except for a few people that I know, I watch all of this on TV and I think, gosh, it seems so far away. Where, where, where are things happening that are, that are so difficult? And in the last few weeks, I have um, was given some statistics on our county, Jackson County. In the month of November, last month, 
30 days half November, just that last month. In Jackson County, 462 homes were foreclosed on. That brings the number of properties in Jackson County that have been foreclosed on that are owned by the bank now to a total of over 5,500. Our church sits in zip code 64064. I have lived in this zip code for 15 years. I know almost every street, been on them. In our zip code, there are over 700 homes that have been foreclosed on. And as you go through the website and scroll down the list of homes, I want to tell you, I mean, these are streets you know. This is my street. This is your street. These are our friends. These are our neighbors. These 700 homes are in our community. Possibly layoffs, foreclosures, and national debt may finally help us see that we were trusting that which was not trustworthy. We were eating food that would not satisfy. We were in fact dipping our toe in at least, if not walking in darkness. We thank God today that difficult times give us a chance to see the light. And we who have loved prosperity, entertainment, and knowledge have a chance to change. And isn't that the good news of the Christian faith? The opportunity to change, the opportunity to make new decisions, the opportunity to turn your life a different direction. Whether, whether things have been good or bad, whether you're happy with how your life's been going or not, if you trust in Christ, the power of the Holy Spirit is always available to help you find a new path. In an obscure Christmas movie called The Christmas Wish, Neil Patrick Harris, whose real name is Doogie Howser, M.D., <laughs> stars as Will Martin, a Harvard grad, smart and ambitious. He lives in New York City. He makes a terrific salary. He is climbing the corporate ladder. He has surrounded himself with MBAs and efficiency experts until his grandfather dies. Then he moves back to the small town where his grandparents raised him. He takes over grandpa's old-fashioned down-home real estate company. The new assistants, the new employees that he brings in are following the almighty dollar and the great corporate model. And they begin to, to foreclose on some of grandpa's old friends and, and business associates, one of whom is a fellow named Mr. Quinn, who we're going to see in a, in a clip in just a moment. It's interesting to watch the transformation that takes place in Will Martin in this movie. Through a journey of discovery, he comes to understand what all of us should know and should live out simple truths that joy comes from within, that people are valuable. They're more valuable than than our pride. They're more important than ideas, more important than money, and that in difficult times, we need each other more than ever. Let's watch as Will Martin goes to knock on Mr. Quinn's door. Hello, Mr. Quinn, Mr. Martin. Come on in. Uh, I'm sorry to barge in like this. Probably should have called, but I, I wanted to speak to you in person. Hi, Mrs. Quinn. Um, I'm afraid there's been a terrible mistake. It came to my attention that your lease was terminated. And I know that you were trying to get in touch with me, Mr. Quinn. I was, but Mr. Henning explained that he's in charge of the delinquent accounts. He is, 
But he, he should have consulted me before taking such an action. I'm new at this. Uh, I've made some mistakes, and this is one of them. I'm hoping you'll let me correct it. Would you stay? I don't know when I'm going to be able to get a job. I'm trying, but... You'll pay when you're able to. Thank you. Merry Christmas to you both. Merry Christmas, Mr. Martin. Merry Christmas, friends. In your life, are you thinking about what's really important? Do you look at the people in your home and give thanks for the blessing of having them in your life? Do you think of your coworkers and appreciate them, the people that you come to church with here on Sunday morning? All around us are great blessings, the simple, true, wonderful gifts of God's life and love in the people around us. A friend called me a few weeks ago. He was driving to work. He said, I've been stuck for several months in this pity party about my 401k account and, and how much it's gone down. And I've whined and complained to myself. But he said, I had to call you because on the way to work today, a little voice uh, popped in my head and said, hey, you still have your wife and kids. Would you like to trade them? And he thought, oh my gosh, absolutely not. I have the things that are truly important. And he called me and he said, I realized right then, I have my family. I have everything that matters. I have it all. Friends, especially in difficult times, love must be real. Not just something that we talk about at church or a word that the kids hear about in Sunday school or a word that's on a plaque above your mantle at home, but from the depths of our hearts, it must rise up and reach out to the human beings around us. And in our church in the past few months, I've, I've seen this love rising up in the hearts of people. More and more folks in our church are being involved in missions and helping others. There's a young man and a young woman that work together that haven't been coming here very long, but came to me and said, we want to be involved in missions. Is there a family that we can adopt this year? There's a group of retired ladies that have always bought themselves presents at Christmas time. But this year they decided not to do that. They all went out to the grocery store and to, to Walmart and they bought up a bunch of gift cards. And the last three Sundays they've been giving them to me and I gave them to our missions director and she took them around and gave them to people who are having a difficult time. A few weeks ago on Monday when the counters received the offering, there was an envelope with a note on it. Make sure this money goes to needy people in our church family. And when that envelope was opened, there was $800 in it. And so our missions director made eight house calls and knocked on the door and with a smile and a hug and greetings of love from you, the church family, put in the hands of that family facing a difficult time, $100. People are beginning to understand what we have known all along but forgotten. I received a note this morning from 12-year-old Cecilia Cook. What Christmas means to me. I like snow. You could say I adore snow because it makes every day seem like a holiday. I love it when it falls down in specks and blankets the ground. It makes me feel like Christmas. The thought surprisingly warms me up. I enjoy having a strict budget when I go Christmas shopping so I don't spend too much money. This year, Christmas will be smaller. 
with the economic problems and the downturn of the stock market, but I don't mind. That means there will be more homemade presents and less store-bought things, but still no amount of money can buy us the joy Jesus gave us when he was born. Christmas means a lot to me because this is the one time when people truly care. Presents are extra. Snow is extra. They are things we can live without. What really matters is the peace, love, and joy that is spread around this time of year. That is what Christmas means to me. In the Gospel of John chapter 1, we find these words. The light shines in the darkness, but the darkness has not understood it. He came to those who were his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who received him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the power to become children of God. Friends, the presence of God in your life can give you the power to change. And we are praying this year that the message of Jesus falls on ears that are more willing to hear. We have a chance to change, to be restored, to find love, to turn the tables on past behavior, to lose the world, and finally gain our souls. If today's circumstances force us to change, then thank God. If they force us to live the kind of lives that we only talked about in the past, then thank God. If difficulty causes us to put first the things of the soul, to live our lives in perspective, and to put our hope and trust in God, if these circumstances force us to change, then thank God. When these earthly things that have comforted us are taken away, we can choose to be unhappy and complain, or we can choose to see them for what they really were, earthly and temporary. Have you trusted in things that do not last? Is it time for something that will truly satisfy your soul? Light always shines the brightest during the darkest of times. Tonight I declare and offer to you the light of Jesus Christ, a Savior who will forgive your sins, and a friend who will never leave you or forsake you. Are you ready to receive something that will last a lifetime? Will you choose to receive the light of Christ?